Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hey, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. Steve is with me again today. We're talking about Final Cut Pro 10 and going uh, deep into audio today, like well, deep into the details. We're, yeah. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. But specifically, we're going we're going to move into the subframe audio waveform. Subframe, beneath the frame. Beneath the frame. Within exactly. the frame. Within the frame, exactly. Okay. So Final Cut, since actually since Final Cut version one, way back in Legacy, you've always been able to edit uh, audio at what's called the subframe level. Now, what does this mean, subframe level? Well, video, most video editing applications work at essentially at a fixed frame rate of 124th, one 130th, 160th of a second. However, however many frames of video there are That's in a right. second. Now, mm-hmm. audio, on the other hand, um, doesn't have frames. There are no frame rates. It has what's called samples. And you can you can think of samples as like an audio frame rate, but it's kind of. Kind of. Yeah. But essentially, it's a way of breaking up the audio in, into little pieces, into little chunks. Discrete bits. Discrete yeah. bits. Uh-huh. So... Final Cut... But there's a lot more of those than 30 per second. There's more. Right? Yeah. And then why that's important is if you have a frame boundary of 130th or 124th, you're not going to be able to make... You're not going to be able to get in within that frame and make changes at the subframe, i.e. 180th of a frame or what, whatever the sample... Because yeah, sometimes you need to get more precise with the audio than you do with the... Because vi- the video, the, the smallest possible chunk is one frame. Right. And That's what, like the atomic level of a video, right? But, like, it, it is but like, audio, is, there's even more within that. Well, and here's an important point. If, if, uh, let's go ahead, just go ahead and look at this for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. I'm going I'm, I'm to essentially a 124th project, one uh, 24 frames a so, second. So, okay, each frame is a 24th right, So if second. I zoom in, what you're seeing is that gray, that's, that's a frame boundary that's right sort of, That sort of gray area as the, as the playhead moves, it's, that's one frame. Right, that's one that's frame. One frame, okay. So if and I, I need, see a lot of little jagged... Uh, um, that's, you know, audio that's part of the audio, there. and what if you needed to go out and pull out some noise with, within that frame? Yeah. You couldn't do that as of... You'd have to take the whole thing out, and you'd probably hear that, right? You'd, if, if you had the audio completely drop out for a full frame of video, you'd probably actually hear that. Right, so we'll look at a way of fixing that. And first of all, there's actually different ways to, to look at this audio waveform. Right now, I'm at the frame level, but if you go to view, there's a thing called zoom to samples. And this allows you to essentially go further in your zooming. If I keep going, I can now get in down uh, to the sample. So level. I see your, your gray bar at the top of the timeline has gotten huge, or this whole gray area. So this is one frame that's, that's covering right. up the entire timeline and, here. And this skimmer, I'm skimming over the samples. And by the way, Final Cut Pro 10 allows you to work with samples of 180th of a frame. Okay, so up to 80 audio samples within one frame. Exactly. And you're moving the skimmer. You can't move the playhead within the frame, but you're able to move, move the, the skimmer, skimmer within the and, frame. And that's important to know because with the skimmer, I can then go in and I can, um, you know, I can set keyframes. But before I do, I want to show you something in preferences. So I go to preferences, and um, if you go to time display under the editing section, you could show subframes. And with that turned on, you can see now there's a new area on the dashboard, the dashboard that says yeah. sub. See, it says sub. Uh, okay. And so you'll see, remember, what, remember I said it's 180 at the break. So yeah. it's just so start starting at zero. And by the time you get to the other side, it should clock up to uh, 80 on the, uh, on, the, 80. On, the, on the out point there. Right? Yeah. There before. 79 because it started at yes, zero. It started at so, zero. So you can see your subframes right there. You can there. see exactly that there's 80 of them. Okay. But here's an important point. If I wanted to make, if I wanted to pull out a piece of like maybe a mosquito noise that's like happening right here at the beginning of that frame, I can now do that just using keyframes, like an option click. And I can now go at option click and actually set the little keyframes in here. And I can I actually then pull out, let's say, a little piece of noise or sound right at the subframe level. It even tells me I'm pulling these down at subframe 11, subframe 9, uh-huh. subframe 4, and subframe so 3. So you're setting four keyframes so that when you move the piece in between, you get a little fade and, there. And the thing yeah. is, is that I'm actually adjusting these keyframes at you know inside the frame. That's why yep, they're calling the it subframe, subframe level. level uh-huh. Right. And, and that's the important part. And, and there's been a lot of people talk on the net about the importance of it, but it's, I want to stress the real importance of it is to be able to remove noise or something within a frame that you couldn't get rid of just using the standard you know, cut or blade tool. Right, because it, be, it would be real obvious that was cut out. But here, if you, if you have a little spike of noise, you can cut that out, and when you play back, there won't be any noticeable gap. Just the noise, will, the noise gap. will be gone. Exactly. It's a surgical... It's like, removal. I like that. It's surgical removal. Yeah. Now, here's one problem with it. I want to say a uh, problem in this sense. When, you come, when it comes to using the blade tool, notice, let's say I want to cut, I want to cut, 
let's say I move my skimmer, I want to cut at the skimmer position. Yeah. If I hit Command B, what's yeah. going to happen? It's got to cut to the left it's or right. It's always yeah. going to cut on the frame boundary. It can't cut right. at the subframe level. Right, because you're cutting the video and the audio. Right. right? So it has to cut at the frame boundary. Except, well, this Except is what? Except what? I'm going to show you. So what? I'm going to undo this. What? I'm going to what? <laughs> well, this is actually in the Apple manual. Okay. You can cut at the subframe level as long as the audio is a connected clip. You mean you're separating the audio from the video? Yes. So as long as it's in the primary storyline, you're relegated to the frame rate okay. of that primary storyline, yeah. 24 yeah. frames a second. But if you select it, and let's see, where was it? Um, you want to detach. Well, you want to detach the, the audio. Right. They were there under the clip menu. Yeah, so we want to go down and choose break, oops, detach audio, sorry. Detach the audio, detach yeah. Detach audio. Now what that does is so, it takes the audio and it makes a separate connected a clip. A separate connected clip. So you couldn't do this just by expanding audio and video. No, you, you have, have to, to do, do it this way, way. right? Now, now, what's important is I'm still, I'm still working at the subframe. Let's say that's the part I want to cut out right there. Mm -hmm. Now, notice where my mouse is. It's at subframe 10, if you look in yep. the... Uh, yep. Now, if I hit Command B, it's not shouldn't okay. cut at the play it. It should cut at the subframe. And it's cutting the video at the subframe also. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm cutting right at the subframe there. Wow. So I expected it to do the audio. I'm surprised to see it cutting the video this up. Well, that's well. because that's because let's see, we're both. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So the point is, is that you can get away with subframe cutting as yeah. long as that clip has been essentially detached, detached and made into a connected and clip. made into a connected clip, and that's just kind of your way around it. Okay. So it's like that. Very cool. Be, yeah. Seeing you're yep. cutting there. Yep. So. And then you just got to be careful because it is now a connected clip. You could move it out of sync. That's right. right? So now, in general, let, let me just tell you, normally I would fix these problems in, with keyframes. Key yeah. I, I wouldn't detach an audio. I mean, now that thing's getting kind of messy here. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm you just can. You, you can. And the yeah. only reason I'm pointing it out is because the Apple menu says you can do it. You can, <laughs> you can cut it 180th as long as it's a connected yeah. clip. That's very cool. You know? And that very. means that if you have music or what have you yeah. and it's connected, any audio that's not yeah. part of the primary story on. Uh, an effect. You're spotting, you're spotting effects, right. sound effects to a piece. And often sound effects, you might want to take one little piece out. And right. you can just go in and blade that sucker, yep. which is faster than setting keyframes. Just blade, blade, boom, gone. Excellent. I love it. Very good. Steve, thank you. You're welcome. This is all covered in more in our sound editing and fun. Sound of editing. Okay, so rippletraining.com. Uh, please check that out. And thank you, Steve. And thank you once again for watching MacBreak Studio.